Hi guys, it's me Chazar HD and welcome to this incident analysis of the incidents in the 2019 Chinese Grand Prix. Of course, the 1000th Grand Prix in Formula 1 history. And what we're going to look at today are uh, really the biggest talking points from the race in Shanghai. A race that wasn't that great, um, was say 50-50, but we did definitely uh, have some talking points to talk about. Now first, we are going to go into what the title of this video is and it's about the team order situation at ferrari now again for me ferrari were 100 percent right to do the team order which was of course to let sebastian vettel go ahead of charles leclerc because sebastian vettel in the first uh, 10 laps for me was faster and these are um, pictures or screenshots for me do prove that Vettel was faster. So, for, uh, for example, this is about, I think, five or six laps into the Grand Prix. You can clearly see Vettel is being held up by Charles Leclerc. He's in the dirty air. He could go faster, but he can't because the dirty air in Formula 1 at the moment, even though we have you know, these uh, new 2019 regulations, the dirty air effect is still pretty strong and it cuts your downforce level on the front to about 50%. That's a lot in Formula 1 when it comes to uh, losing downforce. So for me here, Vettel is definitely being held up. And also here, Vettel is being held up because he can't take say as much speed into the final corner if he's being this close to Charles Leclerc and it's not doing Ferrari as a team any favours for or you know with them having Leclerc ahead of Sebastian Vettel here's another example into turn one again if you're this close to another driver I know he's not you know right up Leclerc's, um, you know, right behind his uh, rear wing. But still, with the way the dirty air works in Formula 1, especially at the moment, if you're this close, you're going to be losing lap time. We saw it, for example, with Kimi Raikkonen and uh, Sergio Perez later on in the Grand Prix. Kimi was about 0.7 or 0.8 of a second behind but in these uh, types of corners, he was still losing lap time, even though he um, he was faster because he was, you know, catching him quite quickly, Sergio Perez. But then once he got to, say, 0.6 or 0.7 of a second behind, he couldn't go anywhere with the pace he had because the dirty air effect is still pretty strong in Formula 1. And Vettel... The 10 laps was pretty much in this position and for me because the two mercedes cars were running away out front they had to do this they absolutely had to do this because they had to try something different and also if they did not let vettel head of leclerc max verstappen might have jumped both ferraris after um the first round of pit stops so they had to do it from you know protecting against max verstappen and also to try and catch the two leaders so ferrari for me made the right decision i understand why people are very critical of this because yes from a racing point of view we don't want to see team orders but you have to remember the team is always more important than the drivers the team result is more important than the driver's result and i think at the time ferrari did um what was right i think they did what was right charles leclerc really this weekend um or you know the weekend in shanghai was never really as fast as Sebastian Vettel and even came out and said after the Grand Prix um, two interesting things that kind of prove my point. He said, one, Sebastian was faster and two, the reason Sebastian did not pull away immediately after Vettel was let through is because he damaged his tyres having followed Charles for 10 laps. So, and that again is something that really does hurt you when you follow another car is your front tires especially get worn out a lot more 
than they would if you were in clean air. So that's why Vettel did not pull away massively when he was let through. But over the course of the Grand Prix, I think it was proven that Ferrari made the right decision and that Vettel was faster than Charles Leclerc. Maybe if they put um, maybe if they put Leclerc on a better strategy, maybe Leclerc could have got P4. But they were never going to realistically catch the two Mercedes, but they had to try something because, of course, at the time, they didn't know whether they could or not catch the two leading Mercedes cars. So they had to do it, and they did it. And for me, it was the right decision. But now let's move on from that and go on to the crash at the start between Danny Kvyat and the two McLaren drivers of Carlos Sainz and Lando Norris. Now, Danny Kvyat, um, in this incident, got a drive-through penalty. And in my opinion, from what I have seen now of this crash um, and the frame-by-frame -frame analysis, Danny Kvyat was not at fault for this and even though he wasn't at fault for this and someone else in this uh, incident is as i'll show in a moment there should not have been a penalty for anyone for me this was a racing incident and i'm going to prove that right now so you can see here on board danny kvyat's car if you notice he is slightly tilted more towards the right and also you'll notice that his uh, left front tyre is in the air. That's because before he has made contact with Norris, Carlos Sainz has hit the rear of Danny Kvyat and sent Kvyat slightly into the air. So Carlos Sainz really started and I think kind of caused this crash to happen. And because Kvyat then got sent uh, slightly into the air, it then forced him, because he lost a bit of downforce at the time, it forced him closer to Lando Norris and because Norris was coming back from off the track um, and then, you know, trying to take the racing line, the contact was inevitable because of how quickly things were going on and the drivers, especially Kvyat and Norris, just did not have time to react and prevent this crash from happening. Then, of course, that is when the crash started the big one between Kvyat and Norris but I think this angle here really does prove how the accident was started so right here Carlos Sainz his uh, left front uh, corner of his front wing touches the right uh, right rear tire of Lando Norris so that's the first bit of contact and then here Science clips Kvyat and you can see Kvyat has been shifted slightly into the air so Kvyat was then hit very quickly after Science hit his teammate uh, Science then hit Danny Kvyat and then there because Kvyat lost control briefly and because everything happened so quickly Kvyat was then kind of forced into crashing with Lando Norris and for me after that angle and after analyzing this crash for me if you're going to blame someone for this accident it would be Carlos Sainz because he you know made contact with his teammate and then made contact with Kvyat and I think that caused Kvyat to lose control briefly and then crash spectacularly into Norris so if you're going to blame someone it would be Carlos Sainz uh, but for me there should not have been a penalty because you know it's the first lap crashes are going to happen uh, I thought they I thought the stewards honestly in Formula One at the moment were lenient when it came to lap one uh, crashes but uh, for some reason in Shanghai they were not but for me, they should have been lenient. And uh, for me, also, this was a racing incident. I don't think any of this deserved a penalty. But uh, there you go. They obviously gave Danny Kvyat a drive through penalty. And I think some of that has to do with Kvyat's reputation. But uh, on further analysis, 
I think Carlos Sainz was the person who caused this accident to happen. And the final thing we're going to analyse is Max Verstappen's attempted overtake on Sebastian Vettel and Vettel squeezing Verstappen onto the grass. Now, of course, uh, Max Verstappen tried to undercut past Sebastian Vettel. Max pitted around lap, uh, I think, lap 15, lap 20. Pitted one lap before. Vettel pitted a lap after. And then as, you know, Vettel on his outlap was trying to get his tyres as warm as possible, Verstappen, having done one lap already before, had warm tyres and had really to go for it if he wanted to beat Vettel. And he tried to go for it at the hairpin. And you can see here he went down the inside, locking up his right front tyre. And then went wide because of that. Sebastian Vettel got the switch back. And then got back past and even forced Max onto the grass. Now, if we analyse the incident further, um, what I'm going to first analyse is how Max, if he was going to make the move stick, how he would have done so. So, you can see here, he's starting to duck out from behind Sebastian Vettel because he knows he's got to surprise Vettel and try and go for it and get the move done. And try and stay ahead if he can of Vettel um, for the next stint of the Grand Prix. And then sends it down the inside. Now, Sebastian uh, actually came out and said that he saw this move coming from a mile back. So, And you can see also with the position of his car, he knew Verstappen was going to go for it. And he's already positioned his car to do a switchback because if you get past down the inside of the hairpin the only way you can fight back is to do the switch back on the exit and try and get a better exit and get ahead into uh the final corner so that's what he's positioning his car to do now max right here is starting to lock up his tire but what he has to do is of course uh make it stick down the inside but try and bring his car on the exit as far to the right as possible because if he goes more to the left that will compromise his exit and he won't have as good of an exit speed as Sebastian Vettel will that's why Vettel already uh, positioned himself for the switchback so that's why Max Verstappen if he wanted to make the, uh, make the move work he had to position his car as far to the right as possible on the exit if he wanted to make it uh, work. But at this point, because he locked up his right front tyre, he was inevitably going to run wide, and he did on the exit of the corner. And again, you can see Vettel, he sees Verstappen coming, he sees the lockup, and he knows exactly what to do. And then, as we move it on, now you can see Verstappen is now starting to run wide and Vettel already has uh, a better run going through the mid part and the exit of the hairpin and by this point it's pretty much uh, a done deal in terms of Vettel keeping his position ahead of Max Verstappen now I just want to quickly as well analyze this because I know you know, when things like this happen, people might claim that, ah, oh, you know, it was too aggressive defensively from Sebastian Vettel. He squeezed Verstappen onto the grass. We've seen plenty of occasions in the past where uh, squeezing people off the track or squeezing people aggressively has not gone down well. Uh, so I want to really prove that Vettel here is completely in the right because Max is not on the racing line. And on the part of the track Max is on, the exit uh, and the tarmac for the exit, it gets even tighter on the exit. So Vettel is always going to have, because he did the switch back, he's always going to have the racing line and the better line on the exit of this corner. And Max Verstappen is really forever running out of space. And also, the reason Vettel is in the right is because Max doesn't have enough of his car for me alongside to deserve 
uh, to have all four wheels on the track against Vettel in this move. And also, Max Verstappen came out and said that he would have done the same thing if he was in Vettel's position because it is the logical thing to do. So for me, Vettel here was completely okay in that maneuver. And of course, he then kept the position and went on to finish in P3. But there you go, guys. That is my analysis of those three key incidents in the 2019 Chinese Grand Prix. Don't forget to like this video. Comment down below. Uh, what you thought of this video and comment down below what did you think of my analysis and also what is your opinion of the team orders at Ferrari the crash between Kvyat, Sainz and Norris and also this piece of say attempted overtaking by Max Verstappen on Sebastian Vettel let me know in the comments and also don't forget to subscribe for more content coming up on the channel very very soon but guys it has been me Chazer HD Goodbye.